Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television. I'm here with Anthony Orr, who is the Nelson County School Superintendent for our Ask the Superintendent segment here on Central Kentucky Television. It's an opportunity for our viewers to send us some questions if you have for the Nelson County School System. And each month we'll be meeting with Mr. Orr and I'll pass those questions along. You can email info at channel6tv.com or give us a call at 270-692-0237 and leave a message and we'll be happy to pass that along. But today we're going to do our first update. It's uh, May, finally, and it's going to be the end of the school year, right? And it's coming on us quickly. Uh, we finished school on May 29th, as we planned right now. Okay, so last day for students will that's, be the 29th. That's the last day for students, and uh, then we'll have uh, graduation for Nelson County High School on the 31st. That's Friday at 6 o'clock, and that's uh, it's really going to be a unique uh, event because it'll be the last time that all of our seniors in Nelson County graduate from the same high school so there's a little bit of uh, history maybe a little bit of nostalgia for folks and so it should be a nice night that's amazing because uh, just this past year you opened up a new high school right Thomas Nelson High School right Thomas right. Nelson uh, opened up this year and uh, had to actually over the last several months people will ask how things are going at the new school and it actually takes me a minute to remember that we've got a new school uh, because things have just gone so smoothly and run mm -hmm. so well at Thomas Nelson that uh, it, it feels like it's uh, we've been doing that for a long time out there so uh, that to a superintendent and to administrators and teachers has been an, a very nice thing that things have gone so well there. Now when you opened up Thomas Nelson it was strictly freshmen, sophomores, and juniors? That's correct. Right? Just those three grades. So, so next year will be the first year that there'll be all four grades in uh, there. That's exactly right. We'll roll everybody up a year and uh, we'll have probably another 200 students beyond what we have now. So we're going to be close to 700, 750 students out there. Wow. And, that's good. So, uh, and a few more than that still at Nelson County High School. Uh, but uh, we're looking forward to having uh, two vibrant full high schools raring to go. It's a, it's a getting an opportunity to build a new culture in Nelson County Schools and we've already seen uh, a good healthy rivalry uh, <laughs> both athletically and academically between the two schools so it's fun to get to see that develop. And speaking of academically we want to talk about some of the governor's scholars because you have students from both schools, both high schools, who have been accepted as governor's yes, uh, right. scholars, right? that's right. It's uh, really a uh, really a very very prestigious uh, selection and uh, we're really excited for the students that get to do that in their junior year. Uh, students make application to go to the Governor Scholars programs across the state at the universities and they spend the summer there. Uh, Nelson County together both schools were allowed to submit 13 applicants to the Governor Scholars program and of the 13 that we submitted we had nine of them be accepted so Great. that's just fantastic. Uh, so three students from Thomas Nelson High School and six students from Nelson County High School will be spending a big part of their summer uh, on college campus being college students and uh, over the years I've heard back from lots of those students that have participated in that program and it's just a life-changing experience for our right. students. Uh, really broadens it's a great opportunity their, for them. It, it really is. It, it broadens their horizons and, and gives them a whole new set of expectations for what lies ahead of them in their lives. Uh, but it's also nice uh, for families because uh, there are very nice scholarship opportunities that go mm -hmm. along with that for a lot of our schools within the state, both public and private. So uh, great friendships that they'll form there, but also some real uh, monetary benefits that go along with it as well. That's great. So congratulations to those uh, nine students Absolutely. on their Governor Scholars. Now also, we want to talk about some, normally around this time of the year you have some flux with personnel sure. and because it might be new people coming in or going out as the school year ends and the new year begins. Oh, uh, you just had an announcement of a new uh, principal at Bloomfield Elementary School. That's right, that's right. Uh, last year, uh, the principal, uh, Tim Beck, uh, from Bloomfield Elementary School, we were able to actually bring him to the central office to work as our elementary director. And so Bob Morris has served as the interim principal this year and has just mm -hmm. done a really outstanding job. But we did just complete the search process for a new principal and on uh, Friday uh, the other day, we our site-based council voted and uh, selected Leah Harden. She mm -hmm. is actually an elementary principal uh, that's coming to us from Lexington, right. has uh, had a, a larger school 
there that she has been running uh, as principal for the last nine years. Really outstanding results there. Great culture, uh, similar numbers to our county in terms of the poverty levels, but also just tremendous potential uh, in her expertise uh, that she brings. They've been, she's led a really successful school, and we're looking forward to seeing that here as well. And I think she came to there from Mississippi. Is That's that right. right. Yeah. She had she started her career working on uh, Native American reservation Native American reservations, uh -huh. and uh, did uh, her early years as a teacher and then became a principal and moved to Kentucky. So we're really glad to have her and excited for the Bloomfield community. That's great, that's great. Now, are, are there any other announcements as far as personnel yet, or are you still working on some different we're still, changes there? We're still working on uh, some personnel issues, and it's uh, really an ongoing process that mm -hmm. we'll be involved in all the way up, uh, probably until school time gets ready to start. <laughs> um, you know, we will uh, have a flux of teachers and staff members that will retire or move on to other uh, positions, and mm -hmm. so we'll work on that uh, really very solidly between now and the beginning of the school year in early August. All right, great. So we keep you updated on all those changes as they come for the beginning of the new year. Absolutely. Now, also, we want to talk a little about some technology uh, changes that have been going on, some updates that the school district's been involved with. Yes, it's something that we've been working really hard on over the course of the last year in particular. Uh, it's an area where I felt like when I came to Nelson County, we had some real potential to grow. We had teachers and students that were hungry to get their hands on new technology and so we've we've had a good run uh, back uh, a little over a year ago we opened up our guest networks for students and mm -hmm. guests even to be able to use their own digital devices across our uh, Wi-Fi network and that has gone very well and opened up new opportunities for students and teachers in the classroom uh, but we've gotten into some even more interesting opportunities since then uh, for a long time, the district had a, a lot of aging computers that our teachers were using, uh, as well as aging computers in our labs. And as we all know, the older a computer gets, the slower it goes, and we knew we needed to replace those. We've been really fortunate to be able to uh, work with a company called InComputing that uh, allows you to replace up to 35 or so computers at a fraction of the cost. And uh, so we'll be running uh, and are already running computer labs that, uh, you know, would previously would have cost us $40,000 to outfit. And now we can do uh, a new lab at about $17,000, which just multiplies the impact of the money that we have set aside to spend on technology. And we've had really good experience uh, uh, with this company. In fact, uh, Jesse Morgan is our director of uh, technology in the district and he's actually left today to go to a meeting outside of Washington DC he's been asked to serve on the advisory board for Great. the company uh, that builds the in computing devices to replace these computers so it's a great opportunity for us to be able to work with that technology company and shape some of their products mm -hmm. that maybe we'll get to turn around and use in our district for kids that's great that's great I know when I first did my interview with you uh, the very first one I remember you just had like a iPad there you had a lot of technology <laughs> on your desk um, but it wasn't like a big chunky computer so I knew that there was the coming of a lot of different technology there. Well, uh, we uh, we're, I think that's really the the tool, the the tool that our kids need to be very very familiar mm -hmm. with, and so we want to make sure that we give them lots of opportunities to learn with and about that technology. And if we can make that a seamless part of their education, the way it is a seamless part of their lives away from school, then I think we're moving them forward. Right. Um, the other thing that we're doing is really kind of unique is uh, we've got uh, a large number of Google Chromebooks in the district. Okay. And uh, they are not quite laptops, but because of the way so much of our computing work over the last few years has moved to the cloud, that's how mm -hmm. these uh, Chromebooks operate is really by going to the cloud for the computing power and so our kids love them uh, we've got a lot of them out at thomas nelson got several of them at nelson county high school and uh, teachers and students alike are giving us really good feedback on that that's great now, i know a lot of 
uh, special ed teachers are saying about the benefits of technology mm -hmm. in that area as well. Are you seeing that too with students here at Nelson County? Uh, absolutely, and it's something that we've actually had in place even longer with some of our students with special needs. It's a particularly of good use with students who have communication difficulties. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, we're very fortunate, easy for us to sit and have a conversation, but we do work with students who are unable to communicate verbally. And so the iPad in particular has several apps that do a wonderful job of giving students voice, uh, whether it converts their thoughts by the things that they manipulate on the screen to speech or just helps them tell the story of where they are and what they need. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really been a life changer uh, for some of our students and, and gives them access to a whole new world of education and opportunity. It's really exciting for them and their families. Yeah, it's amazing what can be done. It is. Now, we also want to talk about, uh, I believe it was just at the past school board meeting, mm -hmm. it was voted to uh, disband the Nelson County Education Endowment Fund and potentially look into another foundation. So let's first start off by saying what the Nelson County Education Endowment Fund is right. or was. Right, the, the Nelson County Education Endowment Fund was uh, a, a separate independent 501c3 nonprofit organization from the school district. It really had uh, two fundamental purposes. Uh, one was to build up a fund, an endowment fund, that would be used to uh, support work in the classroom. And so teachers would make application for grant monies, uh, maybe to buy some of the technology that we've talked right. about to use in their classrooms, in some cases maybe to fund a field trip for students. Uh, those sorts of things. Uh, so that one track being really to raise money to support what was going on in classrooms. The other thing that the endowment fund helped us with in the district was working on bingo. A lot of mm -hmm. people like to play bingo and uh, right. that's, a, that's a very popular thing for people, <laughs> to, school districts honestly, to be able to use for fundraising in all over the Commonwealth. And uh, so in that case, typically what happened is athletic groups, uh, you know, the soccer team or the baseball team or cheerleaders might uh, work bingo and get some support from that work that they could then use to help support their athletics teams. Mm -hmm. uh, I think over the years, uh, the, the bingo side just became more and more <laughs> demanding and a lot of the attention went to keep that going. Uh, so ultimately, the board for the endowment fund uh, decided that there needed to be a change and so back in February I believe they voted to disband that organization at the end of March and we in the school district uh, wanted to be sure that we could still uh, work to bring in those revenues for the benefit of students mm -hmm. in the district and the community as a whole so uh, we have uh, set things up so that we can begin to rebuild a new organization actually. Okay, so that's in the works then still? It is. Uh, in the coming days and weeks uh, we will, some of us from the school district, uh, will be reaching out to people in the community very directly. Uh, really not asking for money at this point but asking for people who will be able to serve with us on a board that will help organize this new foundation and then really kind of have an opportunity to transition from uh, the short-term view to a longer-term view. How can we really look at the bigger picture and get a bigger perspective for the needs that our students and classrooms in Nelson County have and find good ways to adequately support those? I know in the past several years we did a lot of stuff with the Education Talent Fund, so a lot of the different projects that they right. funded. So right. it did have money from the organization helping with things that the school district itself couldn't afford to or wasn't in their realm to fund. No, that's you know? exactly right. And, so. and over the course of the time, a little over a decade that the endowment fund was in operation, over three quarters of a million dollars uh, has been generated, right. raised uh, in support of education and education related activities in Nelson County. It's been a great thing for our kids and, and honestly, uh, the school district can't operate and do everything that we need to for right. kids without that kind of support. So we're really eager to get that back online. Great. So we'll keep you up to date on how that's going as well. Absolutely. I know it were, uh, just a few months ago too, there were some community uh, meetings that were held, I believe, with the Foster Heights and Old Kentucky Home mm -hmm. Schools mm -hmm. about uh, some different issues. Can you tell us about uh, what those meetings were about and then also the outcome? So sure, sure. What we did is uh, we had parents who were concerned about things they were hearing going on in classrooms about students who were uh, 
uh, causing disruption and wanting to know what we as a school district were doing to address the needs of those kids but also to make sure that we were providing an environment that was safe and effective for learning. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what we did is uh, we had uh, an opportunity to sit down with parents. We had about 50 parents show up one night, mostly from Foster Heights, and then the next night we had about 10 parents show up to talk to us again, some of those related to Old Kentucky Home. And uh, it was an opportunity for us to really have just a good dialogue. It's uh, not always easy to do that in a board meeting, but mm -hmm. in a more informal setting. Uh, really talk about the context that we work in in schools and how we work with kids uh, to teach them academics, uh, which I think is what most people tend to think of schools doing, obviously, but also work with them to help them learn good behaviors. And uh, so I, I think it was a great opportunity for us to kind of clear the air, dispel some rumors, mm -hmm. uh, give people accurate information. And uh, what we've been able to do is uh, stay in touch with some of those parents that uh, we're in those forums to make sure that we continue to be responsive to their concerns. Uh, but the other thing that it's given us an opportunity to do is really uh, work more to make sure that the things that need to happen for those kids in the classrooms are really happening. And, and I'm, I'm really proud to say that our teachers, our students, our parents have worked very well together over the last couple of months. We've made a real difference in the lives of students as a result of coming together that way. And it's, I think, very exciting. It's, uh, made for some difficult conversations, no, no doubt about it, mm -hmm. but I think in the end uh, our whole community has been better for it and, and we'll continue to get better. And good to have the input or feedback from all the different Absolutely. players Absolutely. involved. Absolutely. Yeah. So also, uh, just a few weeks ago, you had two separate proms. First time for two proms, <laughs> I guess, in right. the school district, right? That's right. For each of the high schools. And how'd that all work out? That's right. Uh, by all reports, it went well. Uh, we had uh, Thomas Nelson had their first prom, and uh, that was an exciting history-making uh, event yeah. for mm -hmm. Thomas Nelson. And then Nelson County uh, had the last of the senior prom with the, with the big senior class that will be graduating this spring. So mm -hmm. uh, again, just uh, really good uh, history building, culture building events for our kids and, and the communities that work and surround those kids. That's great. And also uh, going on around this time too, you have Operation Preparation, which is something right. that uh, we've had the opportunity to, to take part in each of the three different counties we serve too. And it's something new that they're trying this year, correct? In their area? We're doing something a little bit different this year. It's actually the second year for okay. Operation Preparation here in Nelson County. The way we worked is our high schools uh, had independently set up uh, opportunities for volunteers to come into mm -hmm. the schools and uh, work with kids. And really, just to back up a little bit, the whole focus of Operation Preparation is to have volunteers from the community come in and talk to kids about what they need to be doing now, even as eighth graders, to prepare for a career that they might have an aptitude or interest in. So uh, we've gotten uh, people all the way for, uh, from doctors and lawyers and teachers uh, all the way through the strata of jobs in the community. Uh, so we've had good representation from across all walks of life and uh, at the high schools and then we're wrapping up operation preparation for the middle schools we've pulled all the middle schools together and their eighth graders will be working uh, together at Old Kentucky Home is where they'll have met and uh, we've got 50 to 70 I think we've got about 50 volunteers uh, uh -huh. ready to go with that from the community it's another example of how the community of Nelson County is so supportive of the work that we're doing that they're giving their time and coming in and meeting with, uh, with middle schoolers, which can sometimes be intimidating. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, they come in small bodies sometimes, but that doesn't mean it's easy to do that work, and we appreciate that support. That's right. Great. Well, again, I've been talking with Anthony Orr, who is the Nelson County School Superintendent. This is our Ask the Superintendent program here on Central Kentucky Television. If you have some questions that you'd like me to pass on to Mr. Orr in our next program, just email info at channel6tv.com, and we'll be happy to pass that along. Thank you for meeting with us. Uh, my pleasure. I look forward to more yeah. times to meet and talk. That's right. So thank you again. This is Gary White for Central Kentucky Television.